Have you ever met an angel? The writer to the Hebrews says, Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. The closest I ever got to it, as far as I know, of course there may be angels that have come to my aid when I didn't notice, but I was invited to a missionary conference in France, and I was told that the missionaries didn't have the financial resources to help me get there, I would have to make it there on my own steam. I had found a very inexpensive flight from the city of Hamilton nearby where I lived to London, and a relative, a shirt-tail relative of ours, came to pick me up, and I stayed with them for a few days. And while I was there, I had really no money to get farther than that, a dear Christian couple gave me a substantial amount of money so that I was able to pay for a ferry ride from New Haven to Dieppe and then catch a train to the town of Evian in France. And this was supposed to be in some proximity to the place where the conference was held. And so I made my journey on the TGV, the rapid transit to Paris and uh, south to Bellegarde, and then I got on the Milk Run, the slow train that worked its way towards Geneva, Switzerland, and around to, to Evian. And when I got off at the train there at Evian, I called the camp, but they informed me that they weren't actually sponsoring this. The missionaries were renting the property, and they weren't responsible to get people up to the camp. And so I had only brought one suitcase because I thought I might have to walk a bit. And so I began heading out of town. What I didn't realize was that the road almost immediately began to rise precipitously up into the French Alps. And so seeing the rapid rise of the road and realizing this was going to be uh, something that will probably uh, cause me to go home early, I decided I better stick out my thumb. I had only turned around and hadn't even put my thumb in the air when a car pulled up to me and a man spoke to me in English, which is extremely unusual in France. Even people who can speak English expect you to speak to them in French. And he said, where are you headed? And I said, well, I'm going up to a little town called Toulon up in the mountains. He said, well, get in. And we started up the mountain. And as I spoke to him about the Lord, he responded very positively, agreeing with whatever I said. Now, I'm not saying that his agreement was that he believed what I said, but it seemed as if he did. It seemed that everything I was saying, he agreed with. He was a very kind gentleman. We rode along, and we finally got to the little town of Toulon. And when we got there, he paused and said, where's the camp? I said, I have no idea. And so he went into the post office, and he asked for directions and came back to the car and said, this is just where they have their post box. It's actually another 10 miles up into the mountains. And so back into the car we got, and uh, zigging and zagging way up into the Alps, he finally pulled up at the gate of the camp where the conference was to be held. I got out of the car, turned to thank him, and he was gone. Whether it was an angel of the Lord, or someone that God had moved to help me. I do not know. But I do remember very clearly sitting at the dinner table of some friends in Atlanta, in Georgia, and this couple were very dignified, very quiet, very conservative in their outlook. And we were talking about angels. She said, you know, I've never told this story really to many people. But I was to pick up a lady who was speaking at a women's outreach at a hotel north of Atlanta, and the airport's on the south side, and I'd gone down and picked her up. Well, traffic was bad, her flight had been delayed, and we were going to be late for the engagement at the hotel. And so I decided to see if I could take a shortcut. 
And I ended up somewhere, I was totally confused as to where I was. I had no idea how to get to the hotel. And again, this was back in the days of the CB radios, and there was one in the car. She said, my concern was that if I began to speak through the CB radio and told people where I was, for two women out in the middle of nowhere, it just didn't seem to be a very wise thing to do. And so we were sitting there at this particular intersection. I could see the crossroads, the names of the two roads. I had this in my hand. I had the mic open. And we were just ready to ask the Lord to help us out of the situation when a voice came through the CB radio. And the voice asked for directions from the very crossroads where we were to the hotel where we were going. There was no one else around. We were the only ones sitting out in the countryside at this little intersection. And the directions, a truck driver came on, gave directions exactly, and we were able to make it to the hotel in time. And she really believed that God had sent a messenger to help her to get there in good time. Don't forget, says the Lord, to entertain strangers. That is, to show the love of God to people that we don't necessarily know. Because sometimes it may be that those people that we show kindness to are actually angels. For the scripture says that the Lord has sent angels to be ministering spirits to those who shall be heirs of ultimate salvation. That is, until we are caught home to heaven, God has sent these emissaries to minister to our needs, to undertake for details in our lives that are beyond our control. And God uses angels to this day. May the Lord encourage us to realize we're well looked after and we need to respond in this way, says the scripture, entertaining strangers because we never know when we'll actually be dealing with angels.